you've wandered yourself into a temperate forest in the Northwest Americas. A uh, 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 what? You don't know what a temperate forest is? N no. Here, let me tell you a little bit more about temperate forests. Because we live in Tualatin, the biome that surrounds us the most are temperate forests. There are three kinds of temperate forests, and the two that are nearest us are deciduous and coniferous. And here we are at Champui State Park, which has examples of coniferous and deciduous forestry. As you can see by this moist, dense soil, temperate forests tend to have a P.E. ratio of greater than one, which in turn contributes to all this productivity you see. Temperate forests are home to broadleaf and coniferous trees. But wait a minute, what's the difference between a deciduous tree and a coniferous tree? Conifers produce these small little needles. Small leaves like this one here from this deciduous broadleaf tree are big and wide and fleshy. Deciduous means falling off at maturity or tending to fall off. Deciduous trees are characterized by this. And when you drop down here, you can see all the leaf litter from when it happens. Temperate forests are the second most productive biome on Earth. They're second only, of course, to tropical rainforests. And though they are second, there's a huge gap in between the productivity of tropical rainforests and temperate forests. This is because during the colder seasons, when the deciduous trees lose all their leaves, photosynthesis is way down. And being the producers of the forest, there's going to be a lot less energy flowing through the ecosystem. These two types of forest biomes can usually be found between 40 degrees and 60 degrees north and south of the equator. This is a map of coniferous forest biomes around the world, and this is a map of deciduous forests around the world. And although they make up a great portion of the earth, they are still very fragile and complex ecosystems. There are many biotic and abiotic factors that are essential to keeping the balance of the biomes. Because coniferous and deciduous forests are very similar, they are affected, for the most part, by the same factors. Examples of abiotic factors are light from the sun, temperature, precipitation, and soil conditions. These forests prefer moderate sunlight, a temperature range between negative 22 and 86 degrees Fahrenheit, an annual rainfall between 500 and 1500 millimeters, and dense, fertile soil. Examples of biotic factors are many different species of trees, bushes, flowers, moss, mushrooms, slugs, ants, spiders, bears, deer, eagles, squirrels, rabbits, wolves, and so on and so on. These forests can easily support all these different plants and animals due to how high of a net productivity it has and how much energy is available. All of these biotic factors are very reliant on one another. An example of a common food chain would be a plant that gets energy from the sun that gets eaten by a rabbit, who is then eaten by a stoat, which is then eaten by a cougar. But there are also many other relationships that develop between organisms, such as the interspecific competition between photosynthesizing plants. As taller trees block most of the sunlight from reaching the forest floor, only smaller plants are able to grow beneath them. The trees that do grow underneath are usually greatly suppressed. 
or the ever-present example of mutualistic respiration. Plants convert carbon dioxide into oxygen, which is respired by animals, who in turn convert that oxygen back into CO2 for the plants to breathe. So does that answer your question? No, I, I want to go home. You don't know the way out of here? Man, you're screwed. This place is freaky. <laughs> this, 